SpaceX is planning the most exciting rocket launch of all time from Boca Chica, Texas at Starbase. And this rocket is 400 feet tall. 400 feet tall. The rocket itself on top, the Starship, is 150 feet tall. And the booster on the bottom, about 250 feet tall. This thing is absolutely gigantic. Absolutely gigantic. And just recently, January 9th, 2023, it took them about 52 minutes to stack the Starship on top of the booster. Now take a look at this. This is from SpaceX's Twitter. Ship 24 stacked on Super Heavy Booster 7 at Starbase in Texas. They posted this at 7.04 p.m., but it happened hours before then. So what's going to be happening next for SpaceX? Well, the booster and the ship are mated. So they can work together in tandem to get ready for a launch, which Elon Musk says, and I want to show you this too. Elon Musk says, we have a real shot at late February. March launch attempt appears highly likely. So in between now, late February or March-ish, Elon Musk thinks that they can do all the tests that they need to do in order to get it flight ready. If they get this thing flight ready and they're already working with the FAA, right? So they've been working with the FAA for the last 10 or more years, last decade to make sure that the Falcon 9 flies properly and to get people to the International Space Station on top of a Falcon 9 inside of a Crew Dragon capsule. They have 33 Raptor 2 engines on the bottom of the booster to lift this gigantic rocket for the orbital flight test. Now, Starship has its own engines. They've static fired the Starship engines. They've also static some of the booster engines already. Now that the Starship and the booster are mated, they have to do some testing to make sure that this will function properly for an orbital flight test that Elon said was going to happen in late February or sometime in March. So the booster is already static fired a few times, but it's never static fired with a Starship on top of it. Now, all of the static fires before seem to have been absolutely successful. And it seems to be that the booster is in a really great place right now because they just brought it back from the high bay and back down to the orbital launch mount. And that happened relatively quickly. Booster 9 is already at the orbital launch mount. They did some testing with it there, pressure testing, cryo testing with it at the orbital launch pad. Now, I think what's going to happen in the next few days, we do have some road closures here and there's going to be some, some testing going on in the next few days. And I think what's going to happen. And the only thing that we can think of at this point for the next few days, booster nine is going to go away. We think we're going to move it away from there. But I also think that they're going to start testing cryogenically on the booster and possibly the ship coming up in the next few days. So it's 1.10 now. On Wednesday the 11th, we have a road closure between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. That's Central Time, Texas Time. So we have 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. road closure. So that time could be used to move Booster 9 away from the testing a little bit. Could move it back to the bay so they can get it ready for a possible flight if they figure out that Booster 7 isn't going to be ready for this flight. So they have to get it ready. They have to get it prepared. They have to do some data checking on everything that happened when they tested the Booster 9. Or they could just move it off to the side, off to the landing pad area of the, of the orbital flight area. So Booster 9, probably going to move it out of there. It's not going to take that long. Probably an hour to move it out of there. And then after that, they could start up with cryogenic testing, pressure testing of the booster and ship 24 tomorrow. So Wednesday, January 11th, I'm expecting between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. that they're going to be doing some cryo testing and some pressure testing, but also they're going to test out the pipes to make sure everything works, make sure everything can flow freely into the booster and into the ship. That's one of the first things they have to do in order for this flight to take place. Now, like I said before, the booster had already done some static fires. So could they repeat those static fires while the ship is on top of it to make sure that the ship can withstand the pressure of a full static fire at the end of the cycle before they actually launch this thing? So they're going to have to, I think they're going to have to redo the whole gambit of these static fire tests before they launch the full Starship. Because the FAA is watching, you know, and also NASA is watching. And NASA is watching because 
SpaceX is using the Starship, not this particular Starship, but they're using the Starship vehicle in the future to get humans back to the moon. Now, this is important. This is one of the most important missions that SpaceX could ever have is to send people to the moon. Now, they aren't going to send them in a Starship. Mind you, they're going to send NASA's going to send the astronauts on an SLS rocket in an Orion capsule, and then they're going to dock with the Starship in lunar orbit. And then the people are going to transfer from the Orion capsule into the Starship and then take the Starship down to the surface of the moon. Okay, so this is this it seems very complex, right? And also the Starship has to refuel in orbit, in Earth orbit, in order to get to the moon too. So it's a very complicated process. And this is literally the very, very, very beginning of that whole process. This orbital flight test, if this goes out with goes on without a hitch, if this just flies and it does everything that it needs to do on the first mission, then SpaceX is in a really absolutely incredible place. And if it doesn't, then they will gather all the data that they need to gather in order to make the next test even better than the first one. Now, if the rocket doesn't make it off the pad, I talked about this in my last video, and I'll link that at the end of this. Something drastic could happen. They could be months rebuilding the orbital launch mount. They could be a year. The FAA might step in and say, hey, we got to step in here and see what happened. And even though the FAA knows that this is an experimental rocket, this is a rocket that will be sending people to the moon. So it's a very important mission. But also, if the static fires of the booster from before are replicated, this could take Elon's guesses as good as anybody's at this point. I mean, he's the best person. He, he knows the most about this. But if they go through that whole gambit of static fires again, they'll have to do you know, a three-engine static fire, a seven-engine static fire, a 12-engine static fire, something along those lines, and then move it up to possibly a 19 or 20-engine static fire. Something. And these are numbers that are that are incremental as well. So they'll start small, work their way up to a larger number of Raptor 2 engines on the booster. And making sure that everything fits properly after every single one of these static fires, because the thing's going to shake. I mean, these are the most powerful engines on the face of the earth right now. And this thing is going to be shaking the starship like it's never been shaken before. And they have to make sure that it stays together before they do the launch. So everyone in these static fires, they're going to do the fires, do the static fires, and then gather the data, make sure everything works properly. And if it does, they'll move on to the next static fire and incrementally go up in number of Raptor engines. Now, this happened before. They've stacked the Starship numerous times on top of the booster. They've done fit checks. They've done cryogenic tests. Elon has said they've had launch dates before. And most of the time, because it is rocketry and it's extremely difficult, it might take a little bit longer than March for this thing to launch. It could be middle of summer. It could be September. It could be months after this whole test regimen goes through in the next few days here. You know, when we start seeing these tests happen. Now, Wednesday, we have a, st we have a, we have a closure, but we also have one on Thursday and we have one on Friday. And the one on Friday is 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The reason why 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Friday is because SpaceX and Cameron County, where Starbase is located, have a, an agreement that SpaceX won't use the Starbase for testing facilities or for testing on the weekends because people like to use the beach down there on the weekends. So that's why they're only testing until 4 p.m. on Friday. So it's a possible closure. If something doesn't happen on Wednesday, they're going to move it to Thursday. And then if something does happen on Thursday, they'll move it to Friday and they could use all these days as well. So alternative dates could be used as a potential full primary date in the future. SpaceX has done that before. And also if the testing is going well, say if they if they ramp up the testing throughout the day and six o'clock rolls around, seven o'clock rolls around, then they're like, oh, we have a window of opportunity here between seven o'clock and nine o'clock to test, they can call somebody in Cameron County and be like, hey, we we need another hour or two. And Cameron County will most likely grant them that time. 
So we could possibly see the, the, the testing start early or so many times we've seen it start midday and go for till, until it gets dark. And then beyond that, I mean, I filmed from the side of highway four at Starbase numerous times throughout the day. And then there was supposed to be a road closure at two o'clock in the afternoon and it just never happened, you know? And I'm like, oh, I got to get out of here by two. And then it just never happened. So testing schedules are always fluid at Starbase, but we can expect to see something exciting happening in the next week. So this whole week is going to be pretty cool. Next week is going to be even cooler, hopefully. And we may even see a, an unstack of the booster in the ship if anything goes wrong or if they don't need it stacked anymore. Like, why risk it if they're only doing some tests to make sure that everything fits properly after the ship and the booster both have been tested? So if they fit properly, all good, keep testing, or they could unstack them, do some more testing individually, and then put them back together eventually, maybe in February or March again. And they've done that before. They've stacked and destacked, tested different things. So it's kind of up in the air at this point, what they do with this thing. But I, I believe what they're going to do, like I said before, they're going to do cryogenic testing, pressure testing, just to make sure everything works properly when everything is put together. It's like a Lego, you know, set where everything has to work together. Everything has to stay together. And if you shake it up, all the Legos have to stay together. So, and if one flies off, well, you got to go get it and start over again. Take it all apart. Yeah, exactly. So a little bit more complicated than a Lego set, but this rocket is absolutely amazing and I cannot wait for it to fly. It's going to be so cool. I'm so excited. So please let me know in the comments below when you think it's actually going to fly. Is it going to be February? Is it going to be March? Is it going to be later than that? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've been watching this whole time, thank you so much for listening and watching to this whole, this whole time. I really do appreciate it. And if you could give me a like and a subscribe because that's going to help you out more than it's going to help me out. Oh, we have to switch to the other screen here. Check this out. This is how I do it. This is the promo promo screen right here. This is it's going to help you out more than it's going to help me out because one, I get a subscriber, which is great. And you're going to get more content, not just from me, but from other people as well that are in this space. And they'll be reporting on NASA and SpaceX and all the space flight things that you actually enjoy. So you might get new creators that you didn't even know existed. So please take a second, like, and subscribe to the video, and also leave a comment below on when you think Starship will launch. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate all of your support, and I will see you next time. And this is where I end the video. Wait, is this a news channel? Am I not supposed to sing? This is serious, everybody. Serious business. Actually, we're a podcast. Started as a podcast. Check us out on any podcast app, by the way. Search for SpaceX News Pod on any podcast app, and you'll find my face going like this. It's a funny picture. I like it. Anyway, bye-bye.